Okay, so welcome to the Devon School of Reflexology. Um, we're going to show you a film of the whole practical routine. Um, we're going to start with the right foot and then we'll do the left foot, so the whole routine is going to take an hour. So hopefully you'll enjoy. Okay, so we've already cleaned the feet with wipes and I've done a brief examination of the feet already. So we're ready to start the routine. So as always, we're going to start with some relaxation techniques to relax the foot. So I'll show you a few different techniques first. Um, the first one is back and forth. So you can see I'm using my palms just to flap the foot from side to side. You want a nice relaxed foot and release any tension that you might have in the spine or the joint reflexes. That can be done for a few uh, seconds. And then we'll do spreading of the feet, which is a really nice technique where you're actually spreading out all of the 26 bones of the feet and it's almost like you're giving the whole body a good stretch. So both hands are working together with this technique. Then we can do metatarsal kneading, so we've got the metatarsal bones here, five metatarsals making a fist with my hand and then I'm going to basically like knead the mesotarsal bones. So this technique is like opening up the thoracic cavity and allowing the client to take a nice deep breath and completely relax into the treatment. And we can do the same technique with underneath the diaphragm and the abdominal cavity. So this is basically massaging and stimulating all of the digestive organs. And then just to loosen up the spine, I'm just going to do a spinal twist. It's a little bit like a Chinese burn, where I'm using both hands in opposition to each other. And I'm actually working on all the spinal reflexes, releasing any tension that might be held there. So all those relaxation techniques should flow nicely into one another for a few minutes. So then we'll be ready to start. So then to start the routine, I'm just going to use a little bit of balm just to use as a lubricant on the feet. Or you can use talc or you can use um, corn flour or dry oil. The medium is going to be up to you what you decide to use on the feet. So let's start the routine. So first of all we're going to do diaphragm um, caterpillar walking, diaphragm rotation. So I'm basically using my bent thumb at a 45 degree angle to press and release across the diaphragm reflex. So it's a slightly sliding technique with a balm, but you can see I'm sort of pressing and releasing, pressing and releasing across the diaphragm. You can do that three or four times in either direction. And this again helps the client to take a slow, deep breath and fully relax into the treatment. Then we have the solar plexus. So the solar plexus is up and underneath the diaphragm. So you can see my thumb, my bent thumb technique is going up and under the diaphragm. It's that clean zone two and a half right in the middle of the foot. And hold for a good 10 seconds if it's not too tender for your client. and release. So then we come to working the spine. So the spine starts at cervical one here, at the joint of the big toe, and it goes all the way from cervical spine, thoracic spine, lumbar, sacral, and coccyx. So that should all take 33 little movements of your thumb up and down for the 33 vertebrae of the spine. So I'm supporting the foot as I'm working at the top of the cervical spine with my working thumb. And again, I'm using my bent thumb at a 45 degree angle, working all the way down that medial arch of the foot. Small little pressing and releasing jumps as I work all the way down. And once I'm at the bottom, I need to swap my hands over and 
come back up with my other hand again supporting the foot as I'm working with my support hand and again pressing releasing all the way back up to the top I'm going to do the spine two or three times and I'm going to vary my path from slightly higher onto the dorsal aspect slightly lower onto the plantar aspect and right in the middle of that medial transverse arch so I can pick up different areas of congestion maybe each time I follow a different path down the spinal reflexes. So once I've got back to the top to C1, I'm then going to carry on working around the big toe for all of the neck re reflexes that support the head above the shoulders. So we've got all the side of the neck, this side of the big toe, the base of the neck at the base of the, the big toe, and this cervical spine side, and indeed even the front of the big toe is the reflexes for the front of the neck, which I'm going to use my index finger for to do small little um, bites of pressure across the front of the big toe. I'm going to work down the front of the big toe for all the reflexes for the face and the nasal passages. And then the back of the big toe for all the head and the brain. Being really specific not to miss any part of the back of the big toe out. And then we've got three glands to find right in the middle of the big toe, the pituitary, the hypothalamus, and the pineal. So first of all, to find the pituitary, we want to find the most padded, spongy, or protected part of the big toe, which is usually off-center. It's not always right in the center, as some foot charts show you. And intuitively, I'm going to say it is um, here, the most padded part. It can be a little bit tender where you find the pituitary. So you want to sort of gauge your client's reaction and see how the pressure is. Always lessen off your pressure if it's too tender for them. Is that, is that okay? So again, I'm going to hold this important reflex for, reflex for at least 10 seconds before releasing. And then to find the hypothalamus, I'm just going to go like a millimetre higher. And again, it should feel sort of slightly more sensitive and slightly different for your client that you found a different reflex. So I've literally moved my thumb a millimetre above to the hypothalamus. And again, hold for 10. And then move my thumb to the side, to the lateral side of the big toe for the pineal. So we found the pituitary, the hypothalamus and the pineal just with our basic thumb technique, bent at 45 degrees. So now we can find it in um, what's what I call stage two or second gear is using the hooking technique developed by Joe um, Selby Riley and that is coming from above and hooking up underneath and you might find that this is more effective or more stimulating than the previous technique. So again you can hold that technique for 10 and if you want to work all three of those glands in the brain and this is like third gear so only if the client can tolerate first and second gear then you can use the knuckle technique. So I'm using my bent index finger knuckle and supporting it behind with my support thumb and then pressing my bent knuckle onto all three glands of the brain, which is a very sort of powerful technique that makes sure that you stimulate all of those three glands quite effectively. Okay, and release. Okay. 
so we've already worked down the facial reflexes on the dorsal aspect of the big toe. So let's then work the esophagus and the trachea. So the trachea you find on the dorsal aspect, on the front of the, uh, the foot, and the esophagus is on the plantar aspect. So a nice technique, which we often call squeezing the toothpaste, is working both dorsal and plantar aspects of zone one at the same time. So I'm pressing and releasing both my thumbs all the way up to the base of the big toe. And that's where I will find the throat reflex right here on the base of the big toe. So spend some extra attention on this, this important throat reflex for many reasons this is beneficial for people. Think about your throat chakra and all your um, communication comes from your throat. Okay, so then we're going to work all of the smaller toes for the reflexes of the sinuses. So I've got to work the back and the sides. And I'm going to use both thumbs to work. They're quite awkward to get in between each of the little toes. So my technique is to use my right hand to do the lateral side and the back of each of the toes and use my left hand to come in and do the medial side. So small little pressing and releasing caterpillar walking up and in between for each of the toes. Okay, so then we can work all of the reflexes for the teeth, which you find on the dorsal aspect of all the little toes. So again, holding and supporting the toes as you're working. And I'm just going to use my index finger to just put pressure, pressing and releasing down all of that dorsal aspect. And then to finish off the toes, a strange technique that's always been called brain rocking, is to hold and support each toe and I'm going to use my index finger to basically sort of drill into the top of each of the toes for stimulating the brain reflex which you find not only on the big toe but on top of all the little toes too. So then we come to working the ear reflex, the station tube and the eye. So first of all, I'm going to draw a line underneath all the little toes, basically covering that whole section first. And then I'm going to work each reflex individually. So first of all, in zone four and a half, we've got right in between the fifth and fourth toe, the ear reflex. So I've got the right ear. And then in between the fourth and third toe, Right in between the webbing of the toes, we've got the eustachian tube. And in between the third and second toe, we've got the eye reflex. So it can be really specific finding those reflexes there. Then we can carry on down and work all of this zone two, three, four, and five um, above the diaphragm line for the right lung. And the lungs are pretty robust areas of the feet, so you can just kind of give them a good pummeling. So I'm just going to use horizontal and um, vertical lines just to cover the whole area. So using horizontal lines and then I'm going to use vertical lines. It's almost like drawing a grid, making sure that I've covered all areas of the foot. The important thing is not to miss anything out. And you can vary your techniques as as much as possible. So then we work the thyroid. So this large ball of the foot in zone one is all your thyroid reflex. So again we can just cover this by horizontal as well as um, vertical lines, making sure we've covered everywhere.
And then we've got two small glands called the parathyroids, which lie one above the other. You've got two pairs. So as we're on the thyroid, we'll also work the parathyroids. So we've got one pair of glands and the other one underneath. And the last thing to do in stage one is working these reflexes on the side of the foot, the lateral side, for the elbow, arm and shoulder. We find these on the lateral side of the foot. So we've got the base of this fifth metatarsal bone. We find the elbow reflex, just like a semicircular reflex. The arm and the shoulder. So you can go quite far into the plantar aspect of the shoulder to cover the whole shoulder reflex there which is often a source of tension. Okay and that's stage one finished. So when we finish each stage of our routine it's good to incorporate just some nice relaxation techniques just to take a breather and think about your next um, part of the routine. So let's do some different uh, relaxation techniques. Let's do ankle boogie, it's called. So you can put your wrists underneath the uh, client's ankle bones and literally, it's like flicking a tea towel. Just rotate the foot from side to side and get them nice and loose around the pelvic area. Another nice relaxation technique is intercostal sliding. So you can slide down in between each of the metatarsal bones on the dorsal aspect of the foot. And that opens up the intercostal muscles in there in between each of the ribs. And again, allows for slower, deeper breathing. And then last relaxation technique Let's do spreading of the feet again. So just a couple of minutes of relaxation and then we can start stage two. So stage two is all of the digestive organs um, from the diaphragm line down to the hardened part of the heel. So first of all, we're gonna start working it with the whole digestive organ organs being stimulated. So I'm gonna use both thumbs to basically meet in the middle of the foot and I'm stimulating all of these digestive organs at once. This encourages the whole process of peristalsis through the gastro gastrointestinal tract and can possibly alert you to any problems that um, someone might have with their digestive organs. So as you can see, my thumbs are going from left to right, right to left and meeting in the middle. So I'm basically covering this whole cavity at once. we get to the bottom. Then I'm going to come all the way back to diaphragm line again and work what's called the vagus nerve. So the vagus nerve is a really important reflex to include in your routine and we find this just in between the diaphragm and the thyroid. So not quite on the spinal reflexes, we're still on the plantar aspect, slightly up and under the thyroid and hold that for a good 10 seconds. before we can then move on down to the stomach reflex. Now we've got the stomach reflex, which is zones one and two on the right foot. Again, I'm just using my bent thumb technique to cover it with horizontal lines. When I'm down to about there, it then there's underlying the pancreas reflex. So working that too in zones one and two. And then we come to the liver reflex, which is all zones five, four, three, and two, which takes up most of the abdominal cavity. So again, holding and supporting the foot and using my bent thumb to cover all of that area with horizontal or vertical lines.
and then right in the middle of the foot, if you divided the foot into four equal quadrants, just underneath the liver you have the gallbladder. So again, an important reflex to work, so hold that for a good 10 seconds. And then we can move on down to basically pummeling all of the small intestines here. It's like a large rectangle of um, area for the small intestines all curled up there in your lower abdominal cavity. And you can give these good pummeling, good working over <clears throat> horizontal and vertical lines. Then we come to the large intestine. So the large intestine starts with a small valve called the ileocecal valve in between the small and large intestine. So you find that it's on four and a half, just above the hind part of the heel. And do a few small rotations for that very um, important valve. And you also find the appendix right here as well. So small rotations there before moving up so four and a half for the ascending colon. And where we turn for the transverse colon, we're guided by this bone of the fifth metatarsal that you can feel on this lateral side of the foot. So everyone's feet are slightly different um, shapes of bone shape, but there we find the fifth metatarsal there. And do a few rotations at this bend in the colon where you find it um, underneath the liver. So you've got your hepatic flexure here, the bend of the liver before you go across the transverse colon. And we'll finish the colon off on the left foot later. So then we come to the bladder. So you've got a small puffy area on the medial spinal reflexes where you find the bladder reflex. It should be quite obvious on most people's feet. So just cover the bladder reflex in a few tight lines with your bent thumb before working up and onto the foot and you want to aim for the right kidney to be zone two and a half at waist level again waist level is the level of the transverse colon guided by that fifth metatarsal bone so once you find the uh, right kidney and hold for a good five ten seconds you can find the adrenal glands that sit above each kidney, so it's just slightly higher. It can be sensitive, so you just go gently when you're finding the kidney and adrenal reflexes. And one great technique that you can start to introduce in your practice quite early on is to link the adrenal glands with the pituitary. And this just helps to calm down all of that sympathetic, nervous stimulation that people have to much of these days. So calming down all the stress hormones. So one of your first linking techniques there. So hold for five, ten seconds before releasing and then I'm going to work, swap hands and work my thumb all the way down from the kidney, back down the ureter tube, back down to the bladder. And that is stage two finished. So again, I'm just going to do some relaxation techniques before I start stage three. So stage three is all of the pelvic cavity. So you've got all of the um, lower um, hip and lower back and the reproductive organs in this section. But to start the pelvic cavity, we're going to start with the sciatic nerve root. So we're going to find this in zone four and a half, right in the middle of the hardened part of the heel. And just spend a good few rotations working that. See I'm lifting the foot up slightly and supporting underneath the heel. And I'm going to use my thumb technique to cross a line, drawing a line over the hardened part of the heel and then up both sides of the Achilles tendon. So you can see here on the 
lateral side I'm following the Achilles tendon and I'm going to be doing exactly the same with my thumb on the medial side and then what's nice is actually to use your index finger and thumb at the same time and work both aspects together so my thumb and index finger are following the Achilles tendon up past the ankle and you can finish with like a lower leg massage it feels nice. So then we can find the sacroiliac joint. So I'm going to circle both ankle joints, medial and lateral, with my thumb. This is just a nice massage technique. Before my hand on the lateral side is going to circle this lateral ankle joint and then find the most prominent dip in between the tarsal bones and the ulna and it should be quite prominent which is the most um, significant dip in the bones and that's where you find the sacroiliac joint. So you see my thumb has just fallen into that there. Once I've found it then I can rotate my client's foot onto that joint, both clockwise and anti-clockwise movements. And then we come to the hip and the knee. So again, on this lateral side, we've got the hip reflex and the knee reflex. So there's quite large semicircular reflexes. So I'm just using my thumb to cover those areas. And then we come to the reproductive organs of the ovary and the uterus on the medial side. So I'll show the ovary first. So in between the ankle and the heel, you'll find just exactly in the middle, but slightly more to the back of the heel than you would think, to find the right ovary. And I'm doing exactly the same as a mirror image. So the mirror image to find the uterus reflex is halfway between the ankle and the base of the heel. You'll find right in the middle, and again, just towards the heel, you find the uterus reflex. So a great technique is to actually link both the ovary and the uterus, or testes and prostate if it was a male client. Link those two together. And then I'm going to walk my thumb up and over in front of the ankle and down the other side, swapping hands as I come down. And this is to work for all the way across the fallopian tube or the vas deferens if it was a male client. And then the last thing to do is the lymphatic circulation all on the dorsal aspect of the foot. So I'm going to be working all of the top of the foot. So the last stage in your routine for the right foot is all of the lymphatic circulation all on this dorsal aspect of the foot. So we work this in quite a nice way, which just feels like a relaxation technique. And we can use all of my fingers, all four fingers are going to press and release all the way down from the toes, covering all of the lymphatic ducts, vessels and nodes, and past the ankle and working back towards the heart. So this is almost like manually pushing the lymph back towards the heart against gravity. Do this three or four times just to help the lymph to circulate better. And then the last thing to do is to do lymphatic drainage in between the head and neck. So this is like a pinching technique in between each of the toes, and then lymphatic drainage to the rest of the body in between all the little toes. Okay, so that's the right foot complete. So then we'll move on to the left foot. So we're going to start the left foot. So again we can start with some relaxation techniques. So let's start with back and forth to loosen up all of the spine and the joints on the left foot. We can do ankle boogie to loosen up the pelvic cavity, any problems or tightness in the hips. And the lower back.
A really nice technique that can be a relaxation technique or can be quite stimulating is um, the spine and joints technique where you're using your index finger, index fingers and your thumbs on the dorsal aspect and the plantar aspect but bend your middle fingers and we're going to be using the medial side of your middle fingers as the stimulating part. So I'm going to bend my knuckle of the middle finger and use that to work both medial and lateral sides of the foot. So I'm working the spine and the joints at the same time. So this can be a really great way of helping any more musculoskeletal or muscular problems. So you can see I've got nice flowing movements working both sides of the foot. Okay, so we've finished our relaxation techniques, so now we can start the routine on the left foot. So just as in the right foot, it's very similar, we're going to work the diaphragm rotation. So using my bent thumb technique to press and release across the diaphragm line three or four times in either direction. So I'm supporting where I'm working with my support hand too. And then we can find the solar plexus again. So up and underneath the diaphragm, exactly then two and a half and hold for 10 seconds. And release. So then we can work the spine. So I'm gonna hold and support the foot and start with C1, the beginning of the cervical spine and see I've got a strange technique of my elbows up in the air but that's how you can work your way down the spine all the way down the thoracic spine pressing releasing all of those 33 vertebrae reflexes all the way down to the, the heel for the lower back cingual and coccyx following a slightly different pathway up slightly higher this time all the way back up to the joint of the big toe and do that one more time following a slightly lower path and all the way back up to the top Okay, and that brings us nicely to working all the way around the base of the big toe for the neck reflexes. Think about all the neck muscles you find at the base of the neck and up both sides of the big toe for the sides of the neck. And just to do the dorsal aspect with my index finger, the front of the big toe. And that brings us on to working all of the base of the big toe for the head and the brain. So again, as we did with the right foot, making sure we cover all aspects of the base of the big toe, so the important things to cover. Covering all the, the brain reflexes before we find those three specific glands in the brain. First of all, we find the pituitary, the master gland of all your hormone system, your endocrine system. So I'm going to find the most padded, protected part of the foot and using my thumb just to press on and slightly up and under. Always check that that pressure is okay with your client. So once you're sure you found the pituitary, then you're going to find the hypothalamus just a millimetre higher, so a slight shift of my thumb and then I've found the hypothalamus. And again, holding all of these reflexes in the glands of the brain for at least 10 seconds, making sure that you, you stimulate them properly. And then moving my thumb just slightly to the lateral side, so to the side of the 
big toe, in between the pituitary and hypothalamus. So they form like an equilateral triangle. I'm going to find the pineal gland. And again, hold that for 10 seconds. And just to cover those other two techniques again, the same for the um, left foot, we could use the hooking technique to go up and under on the big toe. The second gear. And then third gear would use your index finger knuckle with the support thumb from behind and clamp your index finger knuckle onto your glands of the brain and hold. And release. So do some relaxation techniques after all those tender areas of the brain. So then we can come to the facial reflexes. So we're going to work on the dorsal aspect of the sorry the plant dorsal aspect of the foot. Okay, so then we come to working the facial reflexes uh, on the dorsal aspect of the big toe. So we're covering all of this area in zone one on the front of the foot. So use my index finger this time to do small lines working my way down the big toe. And then the same as I did on the right foot, I'm going to work both dorsal and plantar aspects for the trachea and the esophagus. So you've got the trachea on the dorsal aspect and the esophagus on the plantar aspect. And I'm basically like squeezing the toothpaste tube both sides at the same time. And spending some extra attention to the side of the big toe for the throat reflex. Do small rotated circles on that point. Okay, so then I'm going to move to the toes again, to the back of the toes. So then we work the sinuses. So all of the little toes being the sinuses again, just as it was on the right foot. So I'm going to use my right hand to come in on that medial side as well as the back and use my left hand to come in on that lateral side of each of the toes. So hopefully this can all flow nicely once you've got the hang of it because the toes are quite awkward to work. Okay, so now we come to the brain rocking again. So we're going to hold and support each of the toes and drill my index finger into the top of the toes to stimulate the brain reflexes. Before I then come to the dorsal aspect again to cover the front of the toes for the teeth. The dorsal aspect of all the little toes are all the teeth reflexes. So making sure you hold and support each toe. And using my index finger again to just do small tight lines, working my way down each of the smaller toes. before I then come back to the plantar aspect to work the ear, eustachian tube and the eye. So then we come to doing the ear, eustachian tube and the eye. So as we did on the right foot, I'm holding and supporting, I'm just drawing a line underneath all of the toes first to cover all of that area. And then I'm going to go in between each toe, each of the toes very specifically. So zone five and four, four and a half. I'm finding their left ear reflex in between the webbing of the fifth and fourth toe. And then in between the fourth and third toe, I've got the station tube reflex up and under. I'm doing small tight rotating circles here. And then in between the third and second toe, you've got the left eye reflex. And then I can move my thumb down to covering all of the left lung reflex here 
And because we're on the left foot, you find the heart reflex too. So the heart reflex is in zone two and three on the left foot here. So just to spend some specific attention working the heart reflex too. It doesn't often present lots of congestion or problems, but always good to focus your intent on there. And then we come to the thyroid again. Again, it takes up all of the ball of the foot in zone one. So again, I'm just gonna cover that whole area with horizontal and vertical lines. Making sure I've covered everything. And not forgetting the two parathyroid glands, one that lie, one pair that lies above the other, just on the border of the thyroid. So I've got one parathyroid reflex there, and then the other one underneath. And you can also find in this line of zone one here, the thymus gland, which lies right next to the parathyroid glands in the thyroid. last thing to do in stage one is the joints of the elbow, arm and shoulder. So again you can see quite prominently there that fifth metatarsal bone and that gives you the guide to work first of all the elbow reflex, so small semicircular movements with your bent thumb and then the arm and then the shoulder which takes up all of that joint of below the fifth phalange. So you can work all the back base of the plantar aspect of the little toe as well as coming quite far forward onto the dorsal aspect. Okay, so that's stage one finished. So just do some relaxation techniques before we start stage two. So I'm just going to do some brief spreading of the feet and some metatarsal kneading. Okay. So I do some kneading of the abdominal organs too, which is where we're going to work next. So stage two is everything from diaphragm down to the hardened part of the heel, so all of your abdominal cavity and all of those digestive organs. So just as we did with the left foot, so with the right foot, we do the same with the left foot. So I'm going to meet my thumbs in the middle and cover that whole area first. So slowly getting lower and lower with my thumbs. So this movement encourages the peristalsis of food through your intestinal tract. Once I'm down to the heel, I'm going to come back up to diaphragm level and find that vagus nerve. So again, we find it just above the diaphragm but below the thyroid and we're just, just on the plantar aspect. So you can see my thumb there going up and under the thyroid to find the vagus nerve and hold for a good 10 seconds. And then we can start moving your thumb down for the stomach reflex. And because you're on the left foot now, you've got the stomach reflex on zones one, two, and three. It takes up a lot more space on the left hand side because you haven't got the liver in the way on the left foot, on the left abdominal cavity. And then going down slightly further down, lying behind the stomach is your pancreas. Again, zones one, two, and three. And then, the difference between the left and the right foot, we've got the spleen on the left foot. So the spleen being a large lymphatic organ that lies in the upper abdominal cavity. So we find the spleen in zones four and five, and I'm just working that 
again with horizontal and vertical lines just to cover the area in a grid like fashion. And then all of the lower abdominal cavities taken up with your small intestines. So again, I'm just going to give those a good pummeling with my bent thumb. Both horizontally and vertical lines. And then we come to the large intestine. So slightly different because it's the left foot. We want to work the transverse colon, descending colon, and then the sigmoid colon, ending in the rectum and anus. So first of all, we've got to find that fifth metatarsal bone again. Again, we find it where we found the elbow reflex. Okay, so we've got the guide of our fifth metatarsal bone as to where we're going to go across the feet for the transverse colon. And when we've got to zone four and a half, I'm going to do a few tight rotating circles for the bend at the spleen. So the splenic flexure here, before I then descend down the descending colon. And again, a few tight rotations for the bend at the sigmoid, the sigmoid colon, sigmoid flexure, before I go slightly up and down to end for the rectum and anus. Okay, the last thing to do in stage two is the urinary tract. So you, again, you can see there's a slightly puffy area there on this medial arch, so you find the bladder reflex there. So I've just covered that with a few tight lines. Before I then use my thumb to walk onto the plantar aspect of the feet. So you want to aim, slightly curve to aim for zone two and a half. Again, at waist level, and that's guided by the level of that fifth metatarsal. Slightly higher because it's the left kidney. And once you've found that left kidney reflex, you can go slightly higher for the adrenal glands. And just as we linked the adrenal glands with the pituitary on the right foot, we can do the same on the left foot. So with one thumb on the kidney, sorry, the adrenal glands, and the other thumb for the pituitary, and hold. And release. And then swap hands, and then my Right hand's going to come down from the kidneys to the ureter tube, all the way back down to the bladder. So that's stage two finished. So I'm just going to do some relaxation techniques. So let's do that technique again of the spine and the joints. So index fingers above, thumbs underneath on the plantar aspect, and bend your middle fingers and work with the spine and the joint reflexes at the same time. Okay, so stage three, the pelvic cavity. Just as we did on the right foot, we're going to start with the sciatic nerve root. So zone four and a half in the middle of the heel, work that specific point for a few tight rotated circles before I'm going to go across the heel and up one side, then the other, and then both sides of the Achilles tendon. So there you can see my thumb is following the Achilles tendon on that medial side. I'm going to do exactly the same on the lateral side. And then we can work with my thumb and index finger together both sides at the same time and end with like a nice slower leg massage. Okay, so to find the sacroiliac joint, let's just circle both the medial and lateral ankle joints first before on this lateral side 
my thumb is going to fall into the most prominent dip between the tarsal bones and the ulna. Now you can see it there. So that's where you find the sacroiliac. And then I can rotate my client's foot onto my thumb holding that point there. And then we can find the hip, left hip. So we've got the semicircular reflex of the hip and the knee on the lateral side of the left foot. So there you find the hip reflex. So I'm just using semi semicircular movements to cover that area. And the same for the knee. And then the last thing to do in stage three in the pelvic cavity is the reproductive organs. So doing the ovaries and the uterus, or the testes and prostate. So again, halfway between the ankle and the heel, finding the left ovary there. And I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side for the uterus, like a mirror image. Hold the two together. And then I'm going to walk my thumb from the ovary side, outside for the ovaries, in to the uterus coming up and in front of the ankle, all the way over to meet my thumb at the uterus mm. side. Do you want me to go round to film you going no, down? Oh, okay. right. I think you'll be moving too much, so <laughs> don't worry. So the last stage to do to finish our left foot is the lymphatic circulation again. So exactly the same as we did on the left, right foot, sorry. We're gonna work all four fingers down on each hand all the way down the dorsal aspect of the foot for all of the lymphatic circulation. So this is a lovely relaxing technique that generally just feels wonderful for your clients and a nice way to finish the routine. So I'm going past the ankle and up the lower leg slightly, pressing and releasing as if you're manually pushing back any um, lymph that's got congested in the peripheries of the feet. And the last thing is the lymphatic drainage in between the toes. So that pinching technique in between all the toes. Okay, so that's the left foot complete. So just to summarize how I would finish off is I would take off the towel of the right foot and then I would review what we found on the feet whilst revisiting some areas that maybe need some extra work. And then I'll finish with the solar plexus breathing, the three deep breaths in and out whilst pressing the solar plexus reflex at the end. Then I would leave my client for a few minutes to go and wash my hands and bring them a glass of water. And then that's when you can write up your notes for your treatment. Okay, thanks for watching.